It's one of the island's most precious natural resources, but decades of living, working and playing on the island has endangered our drinking water. Tonight we begin a three part special investigation. What's in the water? Do you know where Long Island's drinking water comes from? Nope. I have no clue. But I believe some of it's piped in from the city reservoirs. I assume it's a river upstate, maybe. No, unlike most areas of the country. 100% of the drinking water comes from underneath our feet. Long Island's one of only 12 places in the United States of, of America that's designated by the federal government as a sole source aquifer. However, decades of industrial development and factories, dry cleaners, and chemical plants have all taken their toll on the quality of our drinking water. Where that local uh, dry cleaners, for example, was dumping their waste outside because it was acceptable back then. But that one little dry cleaner could, you know, has, has contaminated billions of gallons of water. In fact, many Long Islanders, like Gina Fairley of Long Beach, say they won't even drink the water. There is no way I buy two cases of water every week. At the former Bethpage Grumman plant, years of air and space projects left behind chemical waste that some believe cause cancer. My son-in-law worked at uh, Bethpage Grumman for a, a short time about two years ago and he told me there was going to be a problem there. Browse New York's list of Superfund sites and you'll find a disproportionate number of hot spots on Long Island. We have over 200 state and federal Superfund sites on Long Island. That is absurd. It's an issue that now has the attention of public officials. The public obviously is, is, is understandably concerned when they hear about a, a contamination problem this big, but the state, federal and local agencies are now working all in the same direction to, to fix this problem. And it won't be cheap. In fact, for the Grumman plume alone. We're looking at three to five hundred million dollars over the course of 35 to 50 years to clean this up. It's got to be done. In addition to the toxic plumes, antiquated cesspool systems allow dangerous levels of nitrogen to seep into the groundwater. About 30 percent of homes in NASA still have cesspools, and in Suffolk, that number is closer to 80 percent. Something Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone says needs to change. This is a uh, issue that no one municipality can handle, but we all have got to be part of the solution. This area of Long Island is called the Pine Barrens. It's about 100,000 acres of land, and it sits over parts of all three of Long Island's aquifers. Now, the reason it's so important is because it's undeveloped. That means no contaminants seep down into those aquifers, and that creates some of the purest water in the state. The largest impact to this lake and to water bodies all across the region is from all the surrounding homes. Most of the island has public drinking water that is treated to meet state and federal requirements. The water at the tap is safe because our water districts are working diligently to clean the water and deliver it to the homes. You go real fast. But for Gina Farrelly, that's still little comfort. I'm not drinking this water. I'm not giving it to my children. At any rate, it's an issue environmentalists say will surround Long Island well into the future. We're spending two and a half times the national average in taxes. We just need to direct those funds to doing something as basic as protecting our water supply for our children and grandchildren. Joining us now is Paul Granger. He's a superintendent of the Port Washington Water District. He's also a Long Island Water Conference Legislative Committee chairman and was recently appointed by the state legislature to serve on the newly created Drinking Water Quality Council. Paul, first, thanks for coming in. I appreciate your time as Thank always. You. Um, let's, let's talk about our, our sole source aquifer system. What does that mean for an island when that's the only source of water we have? Well, that, that's, that's our only source of drinking water. There is no other alternatives for us other than going to the uh, Great South Bay or perhaps the Long Island Sound, which would not be viable. So we very really expensive need to try to do uh, Very expensive to boot. So we need to make every effort to keep our water protected and make sure it's clean. And our aquifers, are, are, are they, they suffer from saltwater intrusion, from all kinds of naturally occurring things, um, but also there are other uh, issues like nitrogen and, and, and contaminants that go into our Right. Aquifer. We're dealing a lot with legacy issues. Back in the 1930s and 40s, Long Island was a manufacturing center. So we're dealing with plumes of industrial solvents. That's a challenge that we want to protect our groundwater from. Uh, unfortunately, in many cases, uh, the groundwater has been impacted by these plumes. So uh, we're working with our regulators to make sure that the contamination stays away from our wells, or if we're dealing with contamination, what type of treatment do we need? 
Let me ask you this. Is our water safe to drink? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I drink it. That's the number one question I get as superintendent. And, you know, I have friends, family, and myself, and I drink the water straight from the tap. So I have uh, absolute confidence in our drinking water standards in terms of the quality of our water. But people, I can understand people's concern because of cancer and other diseases. They, uh, they're unsure of what to do, uh, but the quality of our water is monitored not only by the water suppliers, but by the health department, and there's a lot of checks and balances in place. Well, let's talk about the Water Quality Council, because this is something that the governor has just uh, recently come up with to help uh, clean up some of our, of our aquifer sh issues that we have. Um, what is the Water Quality Council, and, and what are you doing so far? I know you've met one time so far. Right? Yeah, it, it's a list. Uh, it's a uh, council of different professionals. We have water suppliers. We have professional engineers. We have academic professionals that have experience in public health uh, protection and evaluating uh, different parameters for protecting public health in terms of how do you set drinking water standards. So it's a very good, diverse group of professionals. We also have representatives from the Department of Environmental Conservation and Health Department. So uh, it, it's a good group of diverse people, and I think we'll get to where we need to go with setting standards for these emerging compounds. Are we doing enough? Are our officials doing enough to help clean the water? Yeah, I, I've seen a lot in the past two years. Uh, many thanks to the governor and the legislature for creating the council. But we had uh, passed this year the Clean Water uh, Infrastructure Act, where $2.5 billion for both water and uh, drinking water and wastewater projects was uh, presented, you know, were available to water supply systems. So the, uh, our, our legislators are getting it. Uh, if you look at what we need now, we need about $40 billion for the next 20 years. So $2.5 billion is a step in the right direction. And uh, I'm encouraged with a lot of the action that the state has taken. I've seen the Department of Environmental Conservation break down its silos and working and, and working very closely with the health department. So there's a lot of good things going. Uh, I'm very optimistic looking forward, but we can't get complacent. We need to keep vigilant and keep the pressure on and keep on moving in the right direction. Right. Big topic, important topic. Paul Granger, yes. appreciate your time. Thanks Thank for coming you. in.